What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna be checking out the brand new Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition V2 keyboard and the new five changes this made over the original Huntsman TKL. So visually they look the same, but they are actually night and day. So we're gonna go through it all. That was too loud. So we're gonna go through it all for you guys, and like I said, talk about the five changes they made in case you're interested in picking up the brand new V2. So first up comes underneath the keycaps with their V2 optical red switches. And the switches themselves aren't brand new like this keyboard is, because they actually use these switches on the Huntsman Mini. So it's those same red optical switches, but it has those inserted silicone dampeners in the switches themselves. And these dampened switches were not available on the original Huntsman TKL, or the Tournament Edition, same thing. So you can see when deconstructed, those little red silicone dampeners, they just help literally dampen the sound when you bottom out a key press, and it helps greatly eliminate that more plasticky high-pitched sound it has. Trust me, we'll do a big sound test coming up so you can hear the difference between the original and the new V2, but there's a lot more going on that contributes to the difference in the sound. So the second change they made comes underneath the keyboard and the PCB with a new layer of dampening foam. On the top plate of the keyboard, there's about 12 or 13 screws. You remove all of them and you pop the top of the keyboard off. The PCB comes with it on the top plate and underneath, you will now see this new layer of dampening foam. The point of this now is to absorb a lot of that resonance and a lot of the micro vibrations that were going on underneath the keyboard inside the all plastic housing. So this will definitely help contribute to a more dampened sound keyboard. And now not to toot my own horn or anything, but back in August of 2020, when I had the Huntsman Mini keyboard, I did a modding video on that in which I took it apart and added my own layer of EVA dampening foam. That in return with those same dampened V2 optical switches improved the sound greatly back then. And in that same video, I gave Razer a little tip. But now when you add that internal dampening foam with the EVA foam, just having that layer now absorb all the, the vibrations and the resonance and stuff when you're typing or gaming, it is definitely worth it to do. Just even that alone is gonna make a huge difference. Dampening foam all the way. And Razer, if you're listening, hopefully you are, maybe that could be a good suggestion to add to future keyboards. You're welcome. Now the third difference comes underneath the keyboard again, you may have spotted it, but you'll notice on some of the pegs when the keyboard was taken apart, those little circular pegs, that's where the stabilizers go. And on each of those pegs is a very tiny little piece of rubber, it seems. That again is to help dampen and improve the sound of the stabilizers. So with the keyboard, they still use those CoStar stabilizers, unfortunately. And when you actuate them and press down any key with the stabilizers, you'll see the plastic bits come through the bottom, and that would also contribute to a louder sound because those plastic bits would hit against the bottom of the keyboard and again without the foam it would resonate make it sound louder now with the little rubber piece where the stabilizers are it'll bounce off that absorb it and again make it quieter so if you're used to like a band-aid mod for example in the modding community when it comes to improving your stabilizers very similar to that but now just using that very tiny piece of rubber and actually with the space bar rays they included just a little bit of loop on those little rubber pads probably not doing too much but hey anything to help the sound, right? Now, before we move on to the fourth and fifth change that the V2 makes over the original, we're going to do the sound test. So you could hear how they sound in comparison back to back, starting with the new V2 versus the original. Listen up, but it won't be too hard to hear.
like I said, just completely night and day. This is the new one. This is the original. Now, if you ask me, I would say the sound profile of the new V2 version with all that inserted, you know, silicone dampeners, rubber, and the foam, it sounds too dampened. It's just my opinion. It, it's more of a mushy feeling, which if you're gaming is, you know, it's gonna be fine because it's still nice and smooth. You know, it's that same smooth linear switch, so it's gonna feel nice. But now the sound is just more mushier and obviously dampened. In fact, the sound when I was doing the recording and stuff for this, the new version came in at minus 33 decibels with the original coming in at minus 10 decibels. So the new one, close to 20 decibels difference with it being that much quieter. So if you're gaming and stuff, you know, streaming or talking to your friends, the odds of them hearing this keyboard is gonna be significantly less because it's just that much more dampened now. So you heard how that sounds, definitely, definitely crazy, a big improvement. Now for the fourth change, still inside the keyboard, but it comes with their processor, the chip they're using for the new V2 keyboard. And it's actually possible of 8,000 Hertz polling rate versus 1,000 Hertz. So this keyboard at 8,000 Hertz, significantly faster in terms of the polling rate and reporting to your PC in real time. Now for gaming itself, is that gonna make a difference? Yes, slightly, even though it's 8,000 Hertz versus 1,000 Hertz, you're only doing a few inputs at once with the keyboard, right? And it's not as important, the pulling rate, when you think of something like a gaming mouse, where you're doing all these you know, micro movements every you know single second or millisecond. So the pulling rate's gonna be more significant on a gaming mouse versus a keyboard. But now at least you know that, you know, spec wise, 8,000 Hertz versus 1,000 Hertz. Then the fifth and final change with this new V2 versus the original is with an inclusion inside the box. Now we get a TKL wrist rest included for us, which the original did not have. It's not magnetic, but it's nice, you know, comfy, padded. Uh, it's like a, you know, it's, it's not a real leather on top, leatherette, but still, like I said, comfy, put it right up against it, and something we didn't have on the original. So. You factor in the five made changes, and yes, this is a significantly better keyboard in the end, and the five changes are definitely worth it. There's no reason to get the original anymore. And what's good about that is they launch at the same price. The original V2 TKL, or the Tournament Edition, launched for 120. This now, also 120. Same price, big, big improvement. 100% night and day. And one quick note, while I'm just showing off the Huntsman Tournament Edition for you guys, these same changes have also been made to the original Huntsman, the full-size layout. So if you want the full-size keyboard with the multimedia dial and the actual dedicated media keys, and you know, the full-size, all the RGB, you can go with that. Or you had the smaller TKL version with the Tournament Edition keyboard. So figured I'd show it off for you guys and tell you the five main big differences between the original and the new V2 in case you're interested in picking it up. But that'll wrap it up, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Hope it helped you out. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Have a good day.